Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. I am here joined by Mr. Andre Julin and Peter Vetchenko, both the co-founders of Insular. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, diving right in, uh, Insular or INS uh, provides enterprise solutions based on distributed ledger technology or blockchain. So, uh, with the theme of bringing people together to work together, uh, what's the benefit from the eyes of the companies, or what does the goal or the usage of Insular blockchain, Insular technology? Sure. The, the benefit uh, for enterprises in brief is that we are the fastest and most advanced blockchain for business mm -hmm. uh, currently in the world. And we are very much proud of that. And that drills down to the fact that A, we help companies build their networks very easily. Mm -hmm. They do not necessarily have to run a node. They can join easy and to set up a network on Insular platform is as easy as to run a website. Second, it's near linear scalability, mm -hmm. which we already achieved with our testnet. Uh, and um, uh, it's the lowest cost of ownership of mm -hmm. blockchain in the industry, which is extremely important for enterprises. And last but not least, it's easy integration with current legacy systems uh, of, of various businesses. And for the end users, the benefit is more transparent processes ability to track authenticity and origin of the items they purchase. Mm -hmm. And of course, they can also save money because for example, in the global shipment space, 20% of uh, cost is paperwork. If we can reduce this paperwork for companies, we can reduce the end cost for consumers. So when people bring up, or when anyone brings up uh, enterprise solution, you know, blockchain enterprise solutions, uh, the name IBM, IBM's Hyperledger comes up to mind. and. In Korea, we also have ICON, which is another enterprise blockchain solution. So uh, what competitive advantage does Insular have over these uh, com uh, com currently out in the market competitors? Yeah, uh, cur current competitors of, on the market, such as I, uh, Hyperledger or Corda, have a number of drawbacks. Mm -hmm. And this was the reason why we started building our own enterprise solution. We actually talked to hundreds of senior people in business before starting development to figure out which benefits they, they want and what they lack with Hyperledger and, and others. And one of the key advantages is linear scalability. Mm -hmm. So we have achieved 10,000 transactions per second on 20 nodes, mm -hmm. and we will get to 1 million transactions per second on 2,000 plus nodes, which we expect to do in the next few months. Mm -hmm. And also 10,000 transactions per second is by far uh, faster than Hyperledger could ever get. Mm -hmm. And that was not based on just changing zero to ones. It was based on actual smart contracts. Mm -hmm. Also importantly, as I briefly mentioned, we do not require companies to run a node, which makes it way easier to join our network. With Hyperledger, they have to run a node mm -hmm. and the maximum number of nodes in the system is limited. Mm -hmm. It's unlimited within Solar. So it's a completely different game. For example, if you're a manufacturer and want to connect with all of your suppliers, Hyperledger would simply won't work. So since a lot of nodes can take part and um, there can be more participants, which leads to scalability as well as the speed, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, Andre, what would you say the, uh, the sharp needle that the Insular has over other competitors? How would you define it? Actually, uh, as Peter mentioned, our platform is very advanced. It's much more advanced in terms of both features and benefits that it brings to end customers. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the core features for a solar platform for sure is linear scalability. Mm -hmm. This is a very significant limitation that currently exists for all, for all blockchain platforms, mm -hmm. that the larger number of nodes throughput is decreasing. And for in solar, it's vice versa. So the larger number of nodes joining network, the platform, the network becomes more powerful. Mm -hmm. And this is really important. This is what makes solar different. So uh, moving on to the application of Insular, uh, it being an enterprise uh, blockchain solution, I would have to ask you, what would be the specific use case of this technology, of the advancement of Insular blockchain? Yeah, very, very good question. And uh, our platform, Insular platform, can be applied in different industries. Uh, some of the industries where we see the, uh, the most potential are manufacturing and retail, supply chain and logistics, natural resources and energy and utility sector. Mm -hmm. And for example, we identified 
almost 20 use cases in those industries. Uh, and we're already working with some uh, prospects in, with some of the largest companies in the world from, from both Europe and United States. Mm -hmm. And we're very much looking for clients here in Korea. And we are very proud to be here to present our test net. And for sure, we're looking for partnership and we'll be happy to talk to large and mid-sized Korean companies that are looking for blockchain solutions. So, you know, this may be a personal question, but there are like a lot of fields that blockchain technology can be used, right? So mm -hmm. there's like logistics, like mentioned finance or medical. So what do you prefer then among all these categories? My favorite ones are energy and mm -hmm. supply chain. Mm -hmm. And we have talked to hundreds of experts, industry experts and executive and also blockchain researchers and the industries that Andre has mentioned are the ones where we see near uh, term possibility for blockchain disruption. Mm -hmm. One of the cases that I like particularly is what we call supply chain of information. Mm -hmm. So today's supply chains are very inefficient and yes. you don't really understand what's, what's going on. But supply chain is extremely important, especially for countries like Korea, which are one of the world's manufacturing uh, hubs. Yes. So with the supply chain of information, there is an end-to-end -end visibility of what's happening with the supply chain at every second of time. Mm -hmm. Consumers could see the origin and could check the authenticity of goods. Mm -hmm. And everyone could save on paperwork, on overheads, and also increase the transaction cycle. And with increased transaction cycle, companies could do more business together, which mm -hmm. is great. So one interesting feature of Insular was that it combines a private, the feature of private blockchain to public blockchains. So I wanted to ask you guys how this, what benefits will provide to users of combining those two separate concepts together? Yeah, this is really very, very good question. And this is a, one of the key technical features for Insular platform. Our platform is hybrid. It combines both public and private chains mm -hmm. and why we need it the the reason why we do this is because companies they need to keep some information private yes Ke yes of course yeah so this 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 feature will enable uh, both kind of keeping some information private and still sharing other um, other information with counterparties mm -hmm. this is the, the, the core reason why we decided to make our platform hybrid mm -hmm. but Combining these two, I mean, running the same chains together, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that cost a little bit more? Actually not. I think it might be too difficult to dig deeper into technical details <laughs> right, yes, now, yes, right yes. now. Yeah, but actually not. It will be same chip as, for example, keep everything in the private or public chain only. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, like you mentioned, corporate partners and corporate, uh, you know, working with corporations. So, in order to do that, careful expansion plan or partnership plans are going to be critical. So I wanted to ask you guys how that planning or the future uh, partnerships or enterprise uh, MOU plans are coming along and what do you guys plan on doing in the coming future? Uh, would you care to answer that? Sure. We already started preliminary engagements with customers from uh, North America and Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're working with some of the one of the largest logistics companies. We are working with one of the largest electric utilities in the world, and we are also working with a uh, with a mining company. And uh, supply chain, energy, and mining are the three verticals where we uh, already started uh, dialogue with mm -hmm. with companies, and we hope that would lead to commercial projects into the in the next uh, quarter that we mm -hmm. will be able to announce uh, publicly. Publicly, so far the discussions are very. Confidential and unfortunately we can't name the. Uh, the, the, the <laughs> I was the, actually the, going to ask you uh, whether it was DHL or FedEx. <laughs> uh, we, uh, it's, it's a huge company, very well known, but unfortunately we can't mm -hmm. uh, we can't name it uh, yet. Under, <laughs> under under NDA, but uh, uh, we we're not working in every single industry in the world. We have this subset of industries where we believe the disruption is is coming up in mm -hmm. this year and next year, and where we'll see the most value being created. So. When it comes to area, uh, North America, Europe, that you guys are focusing on? Yeah, we're, we're, we're focused on, on both markets and that's really easy for us because our team is global. Mm -hmm. We have presence across Europe and North America. We have uh, researchers in Toronto. We have our BizDev uh, hub in London. We have researchers in Zurich. 
So that really makes it easy for us to engage with customers from both uh, the United States, Canada, Europe, but uh, also we have high hopes of, of Asia and mm -hmm. we are planning to make Korea our premier Asian market. So uh, finishing up on the interview, uh, since you guys are blockchain uh, companies, it's kind of weird to ask this question, but the 2018 crypto market was a harsh bear market. So uh, what are your predictions for 2019 then? I think this year will be the year when the companies that deliver real product mm -hmm. and uh, show something real will be uh, among leaders. Mm -hmm. And for example, uh, one of the top rating agencies in the uh, cryptocurrency space named DP Rating, mm -hmm. they issued a report about in solar just kind of yesterday mm -hmm. and they mentioned that in solar our company is doing really great and we are in the right direction and we are on the track to get to top 50 cryptocurrencies worldwide so it's time to buy the <laughs> INS coin <laughs> <laughs> we cannot provide financial <laughs> advice <laughs> and what's your prediction for 2019 yeah, I'd say the following. Uh, what's really critical for cryptocurrencies to go up is, is enterprise adoption. And mm -hmm. we at Insolar see that every month there is more and more interest from companies in terms of our product and in terms of blockchain, enterprise blockchain in general, mm -hmm. which really gives us hope that uh, cryptocurrencies will, uh, will, 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 will increase. Uh, in prices driven by real adoption, as Andre uh, mentioned. When uh, we were at the conference uh, today, we received uh, an uh, RFP from one of the largest uh, Fortune 500 companies. So that really is, is, is telling us that there is so much interest and that cryptocurrencies will follow soon. I will also be looking forward to the mass adoption of blockchain technology as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Andrei Julin and Peter Fetchenkov, the co-founders of Insular. Thanks for watching.